Okay, I wanted to uh, show you another trade in the FTSE futures from the European session uh, using Trend Jumper. Um, unfortunately, I did record the trade room session where I showed this, but it for some reason was not um, it was not working properly when I was editing it. Um, so I decided just to do a quick video uh, and go through run through exactly what I ran through in the um, in the session. Um, so this trade um, appeared here, this jump line 9 trade, uh, the white setup here. And uh, it appeared before the normal start time at 5 past 8 uh, UK time. Um, it, I actually took this setup at 3 minutes past, just after 3 minutes past 8. And the reason being was because the, the whole purpose of starting at 5 past 8 was because the way that the data is for the FTSE is that overnight there's a few ticks basically and they create um, on a tick chart or a volume chart they can create these really large candlesticks and uh, distort where the the indicators really would lie so if you get a situation where you you're opening relatively close to the prior day's close that's not going to be the same so it's going to be fairly accurate for where the indicators should be. So in this case that's the way it was and uh, I took it slightly early um, and it did go on side um, fairly quickly but then it retested this swing low just by a tick. Now you can see I've drawn in a couple of um, zones I'm interested in, just some little zones of consolidation, it's not exact, it's not precise, I'm just trying to uh, outline the, the bulk of the action. Uh, you can see that it goes, uh, it doesn't go to the any extreme of a swing, um, it's just roughly that zone where I'm looking to see whether there's going to be any kind of reaction. So, at this point we um, let me just draw in this uh, line so that we can keep an eye on that. So at this point we then moved up a little bit and then we came back down and we retested and we just got there, got through by one tick. So we'd already got through by one tick, we got through by another, uh, another tick and then we came back up, looked back up to 47.5 and then we only broke and remember this is the the low of the day at the moment so the green line is the the session start the vertical line here and um, we just broke through by one tick and that's a pretty dangerous um, thing for sellers uh, in this case and obviously the one tick on the high for for buyers for, for the potential reversal if you've ever watched that happen you can frequently see a, a big reversal or fairly rapid reversal um, on a one tick fail of the high or the low of the day. It's just one tick away from this um, money management target, this, this first dot, um, which is where we would lock in one tick. And so my view is that if it gets back above this swing high here at 47.5 uh, I think that this stop is possibly vulnerable uh, for a test and you know this is not something that I want to happen so I'm happy that with the fact that it's just one tick away from the money management to actually count that as having activated so at this point I've moved my stop f uh, from 54.5 down to 48 so the entry was at 48.5 moved it to 48 so the the trade is in theory risk free at this point remember it's only in theory because uh, your stop is a basically a, a market order once it's activated and if you get slippage then it could still lose you money on the trade but in theory the trade's safe now so what happened subsequently was it didn't get anywhere near that so we didn't need the stop we got to the complete money management target one at 42 
and then it uh, actually went straight pretty much to to the target the full target of 39 and a half so that was the full fixed target 39 and a half from 48 and a half so that's nine points on the first half of the position and at this point it got to this zone and this is one of the weaknesses of a, a tick or a volume or a range based chart um, you don't see what happens uh, in terms of speed so it did slow down here a little bit um, and it, it paused here for, for a few minutes so it got there the close of this uh, candlestick is at th uh, 323, 8.23 UK time and uh, this one is at 8.26 so that was pretty much three minutes it held around this the, the top of this zone before actually moving straight down now if you just looked at this without knowing that without seeing what had happened in real time you wouldn't have realized that there was any kind of pause um, you'd have to dig into the data a little bit more carefully because obviously this just looks like a, a pretty uh, intense sell-off um, that didn't have much of a pause in there o other than possibly the fact that you've got a green candlestick in the middle of it so I'm noting at this um, at this point as well that the jump line 9 and the jump line 4 are quite close together and they've expanded away from each other now one thing that I do with uh, the FTSE in particular is that I like to if there's a, a big thrust a, a quick move I like to trail the jump line 4 because I don't want it to come too far uh, back on me um, especially if um, especially if the the jump line 9 has lagged a bit behind the jump line 4 which can often be the case. Um, the the jump line nine is the preference, but in this case I did start trailing the jump line four, so it's got through this area and I'm looking for the target of um, the the zone below. So down towards like the twenty three twenty four area, something like that. I've also drawn in a possible trend channel. It's not a a good trend channel I just drawn it in as a possible uh, channel so there's a high uh, resistance part of it and a possible area where it might make um, a support line on the low of the channel it happens to tie in nicely with that area that I'm interested in uh, from back here so we go forward and this is exactly where we get to and then I see a bit of a move back up now the one thing that you'd say here is that okay well we're quite far inside it's probably worth giving it a little bit more room um, because we're still making good profits anyway um, and we we could be in for a really big move however we've seen a move here from a high of 59 and a half down to a low of 23 and we've not really looked back we've hardly had any sort of move back at all and you can see that straight away there was a fairly strong pullback from that area that I was talking about so in this case here um, I was still trailing the the jump line four, and you can see actually as well the there was quite a big separation at this point between the jump line nine and the jump line four. So the jump line nine stop was at thirty and a half, and I actually stopped out within this uh, bar here at uh, the jump line four uh, stop, which was twenty six and a half. So and she saved an extra four um, points on that eight ticks, which was pretty good and you do that consistently over time um, it does add up pretty quickly um, I also said at that point that I just think that although I, I do suspect that it will go lower um, because of that move the way it's not pulled back the, the stop is probably getting to a point where it's fairly vulnerable and um, and it's worth taking it off unless you want to run it behind a, uh, a much bigger um, 
a much wider stop like say the, the 50 EMA or something like that um, but with a two position strategy it's probably uh, not worth doing that so as you saw before it did uh, pop up quite quickly there and uh, went straight through the jump line 9 stop as well and uh, later on we did go quite a bit lower as you can see but this is where the stop was for the for the trade and um, that's what you've got to take and although it doesn't look um, huge in the grand scheme of things it's, uh, it's still a pretty nice trade so the entry was 48 and a half there and it uh, went all the way down to 26 and a half on the um, trailing stops, 22 points, um, which is not bad at all. So thanks for watching and uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.